Alrighty. Hello everyone. My name is Scott Kendrick. I will be giving the presentation for sculpting. The artist that I have chosen today is Martin Poirier. Poirier? I'm not exactly sure. I've looked up a bunch of ways to say his name. Just bear with me. Alrighty, without further ado, let's begin. Martin Poirier is an adaptive artist who is most predominantly known for his large-scale sculptures that utilize woodworking and abstraction into a precisely distinct aesthetic. Although he is known for these works, I think the real common trend for his works can be described as random yet structured. It's almost as if each of his works represent the definition of abstraction itself with its own weird twist. Uh, the definition being that art does not attempt to represent external reality, but seeks to achieve its effect using shapes, forms, colors, and textures, almost all in a different way. Almost all of his art utilizes forms, shapes, and materials that we can recognize, but not into something that we can just exactly depict. His art is strange because he creates artwork that can guide people towards a similar feeling, but is no way or is in no way entirely depictable in the same exact way from person to person. I guess a better explanation of this would just be to see an example of it for yourself, uh, such as the one that I show here on the right. This work is actually called Brunhide, created later in his life, somewhere around the 2000s, but I actually just chose to show this uh, piece specifically because I feel like it most accurately depicts this trend of the hum uh, and the feeling of the hundreds and perhaps thousands of works that he has created in his life. This is the feeling that most of his works portray to me, but before I get too deep into his works, I'd like to just give a, brief, or a little brief description of his life and career that really just led to show what this work is. Born as an African American in 1941 under a father who is a master woodworker, it is easily to see how uh, where his ability, but not yet his inspiration came from. You see, he went to the Catholic University of America with the intention of becoming a biology major, but later changed his major and graduated with a bachelor's degree in fine arts in 1963. After he graduated with the intention of seeing the world, he joined the Peace Corps, where he traveled to teach in a village in Sri Lanka, West Africa. In a documentary I was watching, it is here where he explains that he developed his appreciation for abstraction after working with some woodworkers in the village who were using tools that were other than perfect to create other than perfect furniture and supplies. In his eyes, he saw everything that they created as beautiful and artistic in their own imperfect ways, hence the creation of his aesthetic. After two years, he returned to further his studies and then graduating from Yale in an accelerated master's program for sculpting and then later teaching as a professor in an assortment of colleges such as Fisk uh, University and the University of Maryland. It was during this time, throughout the 70s predominantly, that his career in the public eye really just began to take off after having his work shown in several art shows and then solo works by institutes such as Corcoran uh, Gallery of art and then Whitney Biniel. Without going into very much detail, his life since then has been him traveling the world in search of inspiration and then the creation of sculptures of every size and shape imaginable. Building off of that, I'll show you a few examples of his types of works. Shown on the left is Bowler. Uh, this is what more of his traditional works would look like, but with an organic and visually pleasing shape and curvature. Although most of his works followed a fairly similar template, he would often try new things and techniques such as self, shown on the right. Although this piece just looks like a giant rock, you should not be mistaken. This is several hundreds of wood painstakingly stacked and carved into a dense and fledged surface. Sculptures like self show off how Martin could use several different abilities and techniques to achieve artwork that would follow his general models and style. It was works like these that shot Martin into the limelight that later uh, allowed him to get some of those grants and the abilities to create his larger works that he, be, that he is even more profoundly known for today. Right. 
After exploring smaller scale sculpting, he was eventually able to get the funding and ability to work on larger than life projects that utilize his profound woodworking abilities into an immense abstract form. The works that you see here are some of his more recent works, however, he has been exploring and perfecting the large scale sculptures since the early 1990s. So the one on the left, Swallowed Sun, is actually shown in Venice, the Venice Millennial, and was shown up and built in nine, er, 2019. And then on the right, we have my personal favorite, the Big Bling, made in 2016 in the New York's Madison Square Park. It's just these types of works that show his smaller uh, works on a much bigger and grander level, but still with the same idea and feeling portrayed. These works are what many consider to be his magnum opus, but he argues that the best is still yet to come. Regardless, Martin's works have always, uh, have always been and will always be a staple in what is considered to be great sculpting, and I think a lot of people need to look into his work a lot more. Alrighty, that's the end of it, but it's really hard to just glaze over his career like that because it has lasted and has continued for over 55 years with no signs of stopping, as he just seems to constantly be working on something new, whether it be his small-scale personal projects or large-scale public works that all seem to just be absolutely stunning. I highly recommend checking out a few of his documentaries, as that's where I learned a lot of my information, but there is just so much more to his life than I can explain in a less than 7 minutes video. On any note, guys, thank you so much for watching, and that is all. Have a good day.